Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's Rugby Championship squad prediction. Very, very difficult thing to get right. And I think we will obviously see a different group um, being named throughout the Rugby Championship as we do look to A, try and win the Rugby Championship. B, try and build a bit of depth. So it's quite an interesting one to try and look at. So I've kind of basically got together, I think it's about a 37-man squad. And I expect that to kind of come down to about a 30-man traveling squad. Uh, which was you go over to Australia. I think they go uh, next weekend. Um, so the box have uh, this week off, by the way. Uh, Rashi Rasmus will name his squad tomorrow and uh, they will gather in Johannesburg on Sunday. Um, my understanding is that they will then train and then I believe they'll depart the following week on the weekend to the end of the start on Monday once again. So obviously this is going to be a very different squad um, to, to what we see now because it's going to be a bit smaller. We've kind of been working with about a 45-man group. So kind of cut, cut it down and I think it will be cut down even further for um, the actual tour to Australia. So uh, obviously this is just my opinion and what I think uh, we might see. Let me know what you, you think down in the comments below. Uh, we obviously also don't know what the injury updates are. For example, there might be injuries uh, to certain players, which we haven't heard about, for example, which will obviously change things. Um, but this is kind of gone with, with what I'll get from injury um, updates and the likes. Um, so let's have a look at it. So we, we start with the uh, forwards. And uh, some very good news is both Peter Steff, the toy, and Stephen Kitsop have been cleared to face Australia, whilst Malcolm Marks is set to face um, them in the second test, potentially. Um, so as a result, I have included three hookers, Bongi Manambi, Malcolm Marks, and Johanna Krobola. Um, That is our top three hookers, those three hookers that we will be move, using moving forward. Um, Andrew Hugo Fenton making his debut over the weekend, as did Johanna Krobola. Johanna Krobola very much more on the radio and higher in the pecking order. Props, I think we might see somebody drop out of here. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if we were to see a Gerard Stinekam, for example, drop out. But I've included Stephen Kitsov, Oxen Chair, Gerard Stinekam, Francois Herbert, Vincent Koch, Trevor Yacani, Thomas Tatoy. It is a lot of props. We can very much cut out one, would be my guess. And again, I would imagine if Harold Stinekamp would drop out. You'd then have Stephen Kitts of Oxen Chair as your first choice loose heads. Um, you've got France Mahoba, Vincent Koch as your probably two um, uh, tight heads. You've got Trevor Nikani, Thomas Toy as swing props. They might look to move look to, to move on from like a, a Trevor Nikani, for example, and keep a Harold Stinekamp. Um, I'll be surprised if we see Jan Hendrik Vessel stay in the squad, but he was in the squad recently. So, but, we'll be, but again, Stephen Kitzel comes into the, the mold. Uh, if we can look at the locks, I've gone with Ibn Ethemuth, Arkeel Stamen, Sal Murat. I've thrown an outside chance of Ruben van Heerden uh, if that injury to Franco Mostert is serious. The other option, obviously, is to not include Ruben van Heerden and have somebody like a Ben Jason Dixon cover um, the number five lock, uh, which would also be quite a logical thing. So in terms of the loose forwards, um, I've got Masia Khaleesi, Mark Vinstein, Pierre Steff the Toy, Ben Jason Dixon, Evan Ruiz, Quaker Smith, and Jasper Visa. So in terms of each individual position, you've got two six options in Masia Khaleesi, Mark Vinstein, two seven options in Pierre Steff the Toy and Ben Jason Dixon, your two eighth man options in Evan Ruiz and Jasper Visa, and a Quaker Smith you can basically play across the scrum. So that covers you quite nicely. Outside shot, maybe Ruin Fenter might sort of throw his name in the mix as well as like an Ulrich Lowe. Um, Ruin Fenter, the reason I mentioned him is because he can cover locks. So you could have him in the squad ahead of like Ruben van Heerden, for example, and have him covering lock as well as, as flank. I think that's kind of maybe where Ulrich Lowe might miss out, given the fact that he only really covers maybe seven and eight, but we've got eight options. Um, doesn't sound like Cameron Heinekorn is going to be back in the mix. Um, otherwise, I think he'll be there. Uh, potentially ahead of uh, maybe an Evan Ruiz probably would be my guess. So that's kind of what I've gone with over there. So three hookers. Um, I've gone with uh, seven props. <coughs> Personally, would like to move that down to about six, maybe even five. Um, I think it'll be five traveling props, for example. I think when we go over to Australia, I imagine it'll be Stephen Kitts of Oxen Chair, France Behoeva, Vincent Koch, and one of Chairman Yacani, Thomas Toy. It gives you five options. It gives you two loose heads, two tight heads, and a swing prop. Um, I imagine we'll go over with Etzebeth's name and Murat as the locks. And for, for lose forwards, it wouldn't surprise me if you've seen Evan Ruiz stay behind and maybe a Marco Stoddard or Ben Jason Dixon uh, stay behind as well. In terms of the backline players, this is what I've got. We genuinely always like to have like, these four scrum offs. Um, and I do think they really rate Mourne Funderburg. So I think they'll look to try and keep him in and around that squad. Uh, we wait and see when Jaden Hendrickson will make his return. But I've gone with Fafta Claire, Cobus Reinach, Grant Williams, and Mourne Funderburg. Um, I think, you know, we're looking at those two Latin names as the future of the box from us with Jaden Hendricks, uh, Grant Williams, Mourne Funnenberg, very much the future. Um, so kind of a bit of a passing of the flame, isn't it, with regards to Fife de Clare, Kubis Reinach moving on and the new blood coming in. I think Kubis Reinach, for example, in particular, his time is probably quite limited. 
Um, he is the oldest, uh, one of the oldest members of the squad, and uh, you know, kind of plays a bit part role anyway. Um, if you look at the fly half, we're going with the three options of Hunter Pollard, Monty Levock, and Sasha Feinberg and Gomez Zulu. I don't think we're going to see an Asuma Suzuki or Jordan Hendricks back in the setup just yet, unless there are any injuries. Equally, I think they'll continue to back Monty Levock. I think all three of those players will go over to Australia <clears throat> because I think Sasha Feinberg and Gomez Zulu will continue to play off the bench. And very interesting to see. I might, I reckon we might even go one Pollard, one Monty Levock uh, game. And. Um, See how that goes. In terms of the centers, I'm expecting a, a, a ban for Andre Estes in the back of that red card. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there. He has had a red before. So, for example, you know, might not be able to bring that ban down very much. So considering it might be a, a three to six match ban, maybe sort of four or five, I've not named him in the squad. Um, so I've got my Damon Daly, the Jesse Creel, and the Kanye Arm. It maybe seems just like a bit short on the centers, having only three, but you've got uh, three other players in and around that squad that can move into the centers if needs be. Uh, outside that back, Kurt Lance, Chesney Colby, Billy LaRue, Marcus Olma, Pimpy, Kane and Moody is, is set and uh, set to make his return for the first time this year, as well as Akhil Fassi. So you've got two full bag options in Billy LaRue, Akhil Fassi. you then got wing options in Kurt Lawrence, Colby, Mpimpy, Moody, covering both 11 and 14. Kane and Moody can also slot into the centers, for example, as can Sasha Fami, Gomez, Zulu, and Andre Pollard. And uh, obviously, you know, the Kurt Lawrence, Ches and Colbert can also play at full back if needs. Apple Fast can play on the wing as well. In terms of when we go to Australia, I'd imagine we'll take two scrum offs, maybe three. Um, and Mourne van Bird potentially being left behind. I personally would like to see him and Grant Williams go over. Flowers, I think, will take all three. Centers, I think, will take all, I mean, all three. And outside backs, I reckon my guess would be probably leave behind Fassi and maybe on the Pimpy as well if we try and chop that down to a 30-man traveling group. Uh, so that's kind of my idea, my sort of prediction. Obviously, there can be some changes. You know, we might see a young Hendrik Vessel, maybe maybe a surprise change. A Ruan Fenter could be a surprise. Pacey Good Lady um, had a nice debut over the weekend. I don't think we're going to see Andrew Hugo Fenter just yet because we've got the three sort of hookers and stuff like that. So I think when we return from Australia, there might be a wider training group. Um, given the fact that uh, we will be based at home, it's a bit cheaper. It's not as expensive, obviously, to have all these players going over to Australia. Um, I'll be very interested to see the type of squad we send to Argentina. We might see more players from the weekend, the likes of Quine Horn, for example. I think when he's back and fit, I think Edward van der Merwe potentially might make that trip to Argentina. I think he would have been in the squad as well. Um, so lots of decisions and lots of choices for the Bok coaches. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.